the Petit Trianel was built on the site of a botanical garden within the grounds of the Grand Trianel between 1762 and 1768. It was designed by Anne-Jacques Gabriel by order of Louis XV for his long-term mistress, Madame de Pompadour, who died four years before its completion. Upon Louis XVI's ascension to the throne in 1774, as a present, he gave the chateau and its surrounding park to his 19-year-old queen, Marie Antoinette, for her exclusive use and enjoyment. This was quite a surprise to the public, which some were not too happy about. This was the first time in French history that a queen owned a castle in her own name. For the young queen, the petite Trianon would be an escape from the formality of court life and her royal responsibilities. Admittance into the chateau was very exclusive. None were permitted to enter the property without the queen's permission. Only the queen's inner circle were invited. This in turn alienated the court nobility. Marie Antoinette and her guests spent their time gambling playing billiards in the billiard room, and performing or enjoying musical and theater performances. Marie Antoinette starred in the plays as a shepherdess, villager, or chambermaid. In the spring of 1779, to recover from illness after giving birth to her daughter, Marie Therese, Marie Antoinette retired to the Petit Trianon with her entire household, as well as four male friends to attend to her. This violated court etiquette and sparked gossip to circulate at Versailles and started the malicious insinuations against her that became so common later on. For the Petit Trianon, Gabriel produced a blueprint for the neoclassical movement. At this time, the Greek style was taking Europe by storm. The Little Chateau was a perfect example of the transition from the Rococo style of the earlier 18th century to the neoclassical style of the 1760s and onward. The palace is laid out in a simple cube shape, doting a flat roof surrounded by a balustrade. To jazz up the place, Gabriel gave each facade its unique look. The queen could modify the residence and its grounds according to her tastes. Marie Antoinette wasted no time, quickly making it her own by ordering an extensive redesign of the external areas. Louis XV's botanical gardens were replaced by more fashionable Anglo-Oriental gardens, which Marie Antoinette constantly was adding to and embellishing. The ground floor is accessible by an expansive courtyard known as Honor Courtyard. All its sides are lined by walls that conceal service passageways and the gardens, giving the palace the air of a private mansion. The first two levels are laid out around the vast staircase. The ground floor consists of a billiards room, warming up room, silverware room, and chapel. During Louis XV's reign, the billiards room was outfitted with an ornate billiards table but Marie Antoinette had this relocated to the first floor in 1784 and replaced with an ordinary version for use by the guardsmen whose room was situated on the other side of the hall. The mantelpiece hoisted a bust of the queen, which today can be found at the Louvre. The wall features a portrait of the queen painted by Elizabeth Vigée Le Brun. The fruit respiratories were where dishes were prepared before they were served to the above dining rooms on the first floor. The warming up room was where the queen's food was brought from the kitchen and warmed up before being served at the royal table. Marie Antoinette had this room closed because of the smells permeating her apartments. The silverware room, with its checkered marble floor and large cabinets, kept the cutlery sets and porcelain dining services. Although she preferred private dining, Marie Antoinette appreciated luxury and elegance at her table. In 1772, a chapel was built spanning two floors. High windows light the room. A gallery faces the altar. 
Once arriving on the first floor, the first room you enter is the antechamber. Louis the Fifteenth wanted to combine the interior and exterior at Trianon, so the terrace and French gardens can be accessed directly from this room. Marie Antoinette went one step further by replacing the small window panes with large panes of glass, a luxury at the time. The grand dining room could accommodate 50 guests. Its decor draws inspiration from nature. The wood paneling and turk and blue marble fireplace are decorated with laurels and garlands of fruits and flowers. The room's four large paintings celebrate the seasons and nature's bounty. It opens into a smaller, more intimate dining room. The small dining room could seat 20 guests. Later, this is where Marie Antoinette placed Louis XV's billiard table. Notably, this room houses Marie Antoinette with a rose by Elizabeth Vigée Le Brun, possibly the most famous painting of the queen. The main room on this floor can be found off the grand dining room, which would be the intricate reception room. This room opens out directly into the gardens due to the palace being on a slope. In 1784, Marie Antoinette commissioned a light fitting for this room, made from engraved bronze gilded in two-tone gold and partly lacquered. Today, it houses two instruments the Queen liked to play, a pianoforte from 1790 and a harp from 1780. In Louis XV's time, the movable mirror's boudoir housed a private staircase that allowed the king to reach the mezzanine above. The queen remade the room into a private place of sanctuary. It still contains the exquisitely detailed wainscoting, wood panels, and movable mirrors requested by the queen. When raised, these panels completely conceal the doorways. Marie Antoinette claimed the bedroom that had belonged to Madame de Berry. She had it redesigned and furnished with the help of George Jacob and Jean Rizanel. The furniture set designed by Jacob was elaborately carved with flowers and garlands and upholstered in embroidered lion silk. These nature motifs played up the rural feel of the Petit Trianon. The wallpaper was painted by Jean Baptiste Piamon. Marie Antoinette's apartment looks out over the English gardens. Located above the Queen's apartment was the mezzanine, which during Louis XV's reign was reserved for Madame de Berry. Marie Antoinette reserved it for the accommodation of her female servants, her lady-in-waiting and her first lady-in-waiting. By removing Louis XV's private staircase from the third room of the mezzanine, the room was freed up to be converted into a library. In 1780, fitted with large cabinets. It was used mainly by the Queen's reader, who came here often to look for a book on request by Marie Antoinette. It contained many literary and theatrical works, and some botany texts. These works were bound in marbled and stippled calfskin. The attic was originally built as a suite for Louis XV, and a set of accommodation for the nobles in his entourage. The royal apartment consisted of an antechamber, bedroom, and a private chamber. During Marie Antoinette's time, the attic apartment remained reserved for Louis XVI, though he would never once sleep at the Petit Trianon. Preferring to sleep at the palace, Louis XVI would just come for the day or have supper at Trianon. It was likely to be occupied by the king's sister, Madame Elizabeth, whenever she stayed at Trianon. Louis XVI kept the decor as it was chosen by Louis XV for the king's bedchamber. The walls and furnishings were covered on crimson and white lampas silk bearing a Chinese music pattern. The final room of the king's apartment, the private chamber, is the only space to have been refurbished by Louis XVI in 1777. Although he kept almost all the furniture items chosen by Louis XV, he ordered some special furnishings for his private chamber. 
The first room after the king's apartment belonged to Madame Elizabeth, who stayed in place of her brother. This room was decorated with a floral theme. Marie Antoinette converted the two middle apartments into one bigger room overlooking the French gardens. This next bedroom was probably the bedroom of Madame Royale, the daughter of Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. In 1782, Marie Antoinette had this apartment converted for her four-year-old daughter due to its closeness to her aunt and governess. Marie Antoinette personally decorated the Petit Trianon to her tastes, adorning it with antiques and decorative arts. She was the only queen who had a completely personalized chateau in the kingdom. The Petit Trianon reflects the style and elegance of the woman who resided there.